Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here with my very, very, very ambitious March TBR. So I did read a lot in January, but this past month in February, my reading has slowed down a bit, but I have a lot of things that I'm like in the middle of and I wanna get through those. And then I have a lot of arcs and just, I, I feel the mood coming back, but I also have a lot of other things on my plate right now, but Let's just get into the TBR. Firstly, let's talk about the books that I'm in the middle of, kind of. I've very slowly been rereading Notes on an Execution. I actually think I restarted this maybe even in January? No, it's probably the beginning of February. I'm annotating it this time around. This is my first time reading it physically, but my third time reading it in general. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time. If you don't know what it's about, it's about a man on death row and we're kind of getting the story of his life told through other people in his life, including his mother, his uh, sister-in-law, a detective, and then we see him when he's young, we see him present day like counting down the eight hours until he is put to death. I think we start like 12 hours out from his execution, very beautifully written and I'll probably cry at the end per usual. I'm also rereading Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is about Gabriel who he is half vampire half human and he becomes a silver saint because of this and when you are a silver saint you are hunting down vampires and in this world there is no sun. Something has happened that has taken away the sun so now vampires can be out all willy-nilly. Um, and so people are trying to hunt them down and then he's also kind of pulled into this quest to find the grail which is thought to be the answer to getting like daylight back and being able to battle the vampires. Um, this I am rereading because the sequel comes out in March which I hope to get to as well. That one is called Empire of the Damned. It comes out, I don't know, maybe mid-month. Either way, I will hopefully at least start it in March. I also am reading Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, I've had this one on my radar for a while and apparently I have fully accepted the fact that I am no longer like anti-sci-fi. If you've been around my channel for a while, I feel like science fiction was always the genre that I was like, ah, I'm unsure about or I don't like or I prefer not to read but that's totally changing and I like science fiction movies like Star Wars things of that sort and I like space horror. Gideon and the Locked Tomb series one of my favorite series of all time so I'm just accepting my love of sci-fi now. This is set way in the future and in the very beginning so far all I've read is that scientists have created this virus that's going to allow for evolution to rapidly take place. And they shoot it off into space with these monkeys, but it turns out it's gonna end up with some spiders. And I don't know, we got like one little section point of view from this like baby jumping spider. And like, I, it was just gross. Spiders are not my thing. Um, but yeah, I think this is gonna be fun. It's definitely not dense. But it takes a little more brain power than usual. I started What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher when it came out. It's the sequel to What Moves the Dead. Um, and then as soon as I started this, that's like when my my reading slumpiness started. My reading started to slow down. I was just distracted by podcasts and other things like that. Life. So I should be able to finish this. I mean, it's so short. I've already started it. I'm 30 pages in. I'm going to enjoy it. I know I am. Another new release that I thought I would get to in February, Ein Hollow by Tim McGregor. This is like a Frankenstein retelling kind of thing. It takes place in the 1700s. A woman, Agnes, is living on an island with her husband. Uh, and then a stranger comes to town. And I don't know if he is like a scientist or something, um, but... I think there's some kind of relationship or like working for the scientist as his like housekeeper leads her to explore new ways of living. I'm also reading Wounds, Six Stories from the Border of Hell by Nathan Ballingrad. This is a collection of six stories all about hell or people in hell, things associated with hell. 
Um, but so far I am absolutely loving this and of course we'll report back and if it continues going how it's going, it'll probably be one of my favorites of the year. It's reminding me a lot of Your House is on Fire, Your Children Are All Gone by Stephen Keesby, and that's one of my favorite books of all time. I've got a couple arcs that I should read as well. Um, I don't know if I'll get this one done in time. It comes out March 5th, but it's The Haunting of Velkwood by Gwendolyn Keast. Um, this is about three friends, like childhood friends, and everyone in their neighborhood is murdered and turned into a ghost except for them. And then I think maybe later on they try to figure out what happened. It sounds really weird, but I know that um, I've read Gwendolyn Keese before, The Rust Maidens, and I really liked that one, and it was weird. Um, but so I'm looking forward to this one, and hopefully I'll get it done in time. Probably not, but I'll be sure to update you. I also have Colossus by Ryan Leslie. This is... Um, another like sci-fi horror. It's about an economics professor whose girlfriend takes a drug and it kills you but like right before you die it like answers all your questions or reveals the reality of things. I don't know it sounds kind of wild but the professor decides to join a mission in space um, where he's trying to figure out answers to like why she took this drug, what this drug does, and like what she found out. Um, and then the mission that he goes on like turns out to be not what he thought it was. We'll cover. Sounded cool. Sci-fi horror. Like I said, we're entering my sci-fi era essentially. Also have an arc of Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. Another sci-fi horror. I hope I don't burn myself out on these. But this one we're following a psychologist and they're leading, I think they're leading like an exploration in space and um, they're studying ERS. I don't know what that stands for, but it is a space-based condition most famous for a case that resulted in the brutal murders of 29 people. So she's assigned to this crew to go on this mission and learn and study this and try to prevent it. And then maybe history repeats itself. I don't know. It sounds cool. And again, sci-fi. I've got two more books, <laughs> new releases. The first one, Murder Road by Simone St. James. It says a young couple finds themselves haunted by a string of gruesome murders committed along an old deserted road in this terrifying new novel. It takes place in 1995. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be like a jump between 1995 and like present day. Simone St. James does that a lot. Um, but it is about a couple, they take a wrong turn. They're looking for a small resort town where they're going for their honeymoon. And then they find a hitchhiker, stop to help. And then um, the hitchhiker ends up dying, has a wound when they pick her up. So yeah. I love Simone St. James. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm not sure if I'll listen to it or I'm kind of waiting to see what Book of the Month and Aardvark present to us. Um, maybe it'll be a selection for one of those boxes. Uh, but usually the audiobooks for her stuff is good as well. That one comes out the 5th, I think. Yes, March 5th. Also March 5th, which is kind of like a top priority for me, is Tana French's new novel, The Hunter. So this is like the second book. Um, the first book was The Searcher. And we're following Cal Hooper. He is a retired Chicago um, police officer or detective. He moved to rural Ireland, uh, kind of like just looking for a peaceful life. In The Searcher, he ends up getting involved in a case and helping and then this one, it appears to be, again, he's getting involved in a case. Um, he's built a relationship with one of the local women. He's just building a new life for himself post work and moving to Ireland. It says that it's a story that it kind of has to do with revenge and what we'll do for our loved ones and what we have to sacrifice for those two things. And it's ton of French, so I guarantee I'm gonna like it and it's gonna be beautifully written and I am very, very excited. So I think that's it for my March TBR. Extremely ambitious, so hopefully 
I get something read. Let me know what you plan on reading in March, if there's any new releases you're looking forward to. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you in my next video.